East of Eden by John Steinbeck continues. On Saturday, the 14th of October, the first wild ducks went over Salinas. Faye saw them from her window, a great wedge flying south. When Kate came in before supper, as she always did, Faye told her about it. I guess the winter's nearly here, she said. We'll have to get Alex to set up the stoves. Ready for your tonic, mother dear? Yes, I am. You're making me lazy, waiting on me. I like to wait on you, said Kate. She took the bottle of Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound from the drawer and held it up to the light. Not much left, she said. We'll have to get some more. Oh, I think I have three bottles left of the dozen in my closet. Kate picked up the glass. There's a fly in the glass, she said. I'll just go and wash it out. In the kitchen, she rinsed the glass. From her pocket, she took the eyedropper. The end was closed with a little piece of potato, the way you plug the spout of a kerosene can. She carefully squeezed a few drops of clear liquid into the glass, a tincture of Nux Vomica. Back in Faye's room, she poured the three tablespoons of vegetable compound in the glass and stirred it. Faye drank her tonic and licked her lips. It tastes bitter, she said. Does it, dear? Let me taste. Kate took a spoonful from the bottle and made a face. So it does, she said. I guess it's been standing around too long. I'm going to throw it out. Say, that is bitter. Let me get you a glass of water. At supper, Faye's face was flushed. She stopped eating and seemed to be listening. What's the matter? Kate asked. Mother, what's the matter? Faye seemed to tear her attention away. Why, I don't know. I guess a little heart flutter. Just all of a sudden, I felt afraid and my heart got to pounding. Don't you want me to help you to your room? No, dear, I feel all right now. Grace put down her fork. Well, you got a real high flush, Faye. Kate said, I don't like it. I wish you'd see Dr. Wilde. No, it's all right now. You frightened me, said Kate. Have you ever had it before? Well, I'm a little short of breath sometimes. I guess I'm getting too stout. Faye didn't feel very good that Saturday night, and about ten o'clock, Kate persuaded her to go to bed. Kate looked in several times until she was sure Faye was asleep. The next day, Faye felt all right. I guess I'm just short-winded, she said. Well, we're going to have some invalid food for my darling, said Kate. I've made some chicken soup for you, and we'll have a string bean salad, the way you like it, just oil and vinegar, and a cup of tea. Honest to God, Kate, I feel pretty good. It wouldn't hurt either of us to eat a little light. You frightened me last night. I had an aunt who died of heart trouble, and that leaves a memory, you know. I never had any trouble with my heart, just a little short-winded when I climbed the stairs. In the kitchen, Kate set the supper on two trays. She measured out the French dressing in a cup and poured it on the string bean salad. On Faye's tray, she put her favorite cup and set the soup forward on the stove to heat. Finally, she took the eyedropper from her pocket and squeezed two drops of croton oil on the string beans and stirred it in. She went to her room and swallowed the contents of a small bottle of Cascara Sagrada and hurried back to the kitchen. She poured the hot soup in the cups, filled the teapot with boiling water, and carried the trays to Faye's room. I didn't think I was hungry, Faye said, but that soup smells good. I made a special salad dressing for you, said Kate. It's an old recipe, rosemary and thyme. See if you like it. Why, it's delicious, said Faye. Is there anything you can't do, darling? Kate was stricken first. Her forehead beaded with perspiration, and she doubled over, crying with pain. Her eyes were staring, and the saliva ran from her mouth. Faye ran to the hallway, screaming for help. The girls and a few Sunday customers crowded into the room. Kate was writhing on the floor. Two of the regulars lifted her onto Faye's bed 
and tried to straighten her out, but she screamed and doubled up again. The sweat poured from her body and wet her clothes. Faye was wiping Kate's forehead with a towel when the pain struck her. It was an hour before Dr. Wilde could be found playing euchre with a friend. He was dragged down to the line by two hysterical whores. Faye and Kate were weak from vomiting and diarrhea, and the spasms continued at intervals. Dr. Wilde said, What did you eat? And then he noticed the trays. Are these string beans home canned? He demanded. Sure, said Grace. We did them right here. Did any of you have them? Well, no. You see... Go out and break every jar, Dr. Wilde said. God damn the string beans. And he unpacked his stomach pump. On Tuesday, he sat with the two pale, weak women. Kate's bed had been moved into Faye's room. I can tell you now, he said. I didn't think you had a chance. You're pretty lucky. And let homemade string beans alone. Buy canned ones. What is it? Kate asked. Botulism. We don't know much about it, but damn few ever get over it. I guess it's because you're young and she's tough. He asked Fay, Are you still bleeding from the bowels? Yes, a little. Well, here are some morphine pills. They'll bind you up. You've probably ruptured something. But they say you can't kill a whore. Now take it easy, both of you. That was October 17th. Faye was never really well again. She would make a little gain and then go to pieces. She had a bad time on December 3rd, and it took even longer for her to gain strength. February 12th, the bleeding became violent, and the strain seemed to have weakened Faye's heart. Dr. Wilde listened a long time through his stethoscope. Kate was haggard and her slender body had shrunk to bones. The girls tried to spell her with Faye, but Kate would not leave. Grace said, God knows when's the last sleep she had. If Faye was to die, I think it would kill that girl. She's just as like to blow her brains out, said Ethel. Dr. Wilde took Kate into the day-darkened parlor and put his black bag on the chair. I might as well tell you, he said. Her heart just can't take the strain, I'm afraid. She's all torn up inside. That goddamn botulism. Worse than a rattlesnake. He looked away from Kate's haggard face. I thought it would be better to tell you so you can prepare yourself, he said lamely and put his hand on her bony shoulder. Not many people have such loyalty. Give her a little warm milk if she can take it. Kate carried a basin of warm water to the table beside the bed. When Trixie looked in, Kate was bathing Faye and using the fine linen napkins to do it. Then she brushed the lank blonde hair and braided it. Faye's skin had shrunk, clinging to jaw and skull, and her eyes were huge and vacant. She tried to speak, and Kate said, Shush! Save your strength! Save your strength! She went to the kitchen for a glass of warm milk and put it on the bedside table. She took two little bottles from her pocket and sucked a little from each one into the eyedropper. Open up, mother. This is a new kind of medicine. Now be brave, dear. This will taste bad. She squeezed the fluid far back on Faye's tongue and held up her head so she could drink a little milk to take away the taste. Now you rest and I'll be back in a little while. Kate slipped quietly out of the room. The kitchen was dark. She opened the outer door and crept out and moved back among the weeds. The ground was damp from the spring rains. At the back of the lot, she dug a small hole with a pointed stick. She dropped in a number of small thin bottles and an eyedropper. With the stick, she crushed the glass to bits and scraped dirt over them. Rain was beginning to fall as Kate went back into the house. At first, they had to tie Kate down to keep her from hurting herself. From violence, she went into a gloomy stupor. It was a long time before she regained her health, and she completely forgot about the will. It was Trixie 
who finally remembered.